And good morning, Discovery. Good morning, Bill. Yeah, hey, good morning, Kurt. Uh, we hope you like that one. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, looks like it's another beautiful day in orbit, and we'll be up here shortly and go to work. Houston Discovery for uh, MIMS. Go ahead for MIM. Just let know on the uh, OCA, um, I did try repowering uh, with the SCSI removed and the um, MOD, uh, oh, sorry, SCSI removed and uh, system powers up fine. When I insert the SCSI um, and try to uh, do that, it just locks the system up. Um, the first time I did it, there was no trouble at all, but all the other times it seems to lock up all the time.
Your mother is still in Elizabethtown, I understand, and you have one son. Uh, your family must be very proud of what you've accomplished. Well, well, they're very proud, but you know how moms are when you do things that uh, uh, that happen every few years. And uh, so she gets very excited, but then she gets uh, she's ready for me to come back home whenever uh, I can get a chance. So you're flying this ship. Uh, what are your duties? Well, actually, uh, I'm responsible for making sure the mission goes um, goes okay. You know, before we fly, we have to train and get organized and uh, prepare. So that's a large part of it. By the time we get up in space here, everyone's uh, very well prepared, and I hardly really don't have to do much. Everyone knows their job, and uh, and they're very very uh, professional. So we. We actually get up here, and we each have our duties, and we follow our, the plan that we have each day, and, and it makes my job really easy. Your main mission is to study the uh, depletion of the Earth's ozone layer. And here in Charlotte, we hear a lot about ozone alert and uh, trouble in the Earth's atmosphere. Can you see that from your vantage point? Can you see over North Carolina, for example, what the ozone looks like? Well, actually, Nancy, we can't really see the ozone or... Um, or any of, the, any of the chemicals that we're really looking for, what we can see from space and from the shuttle, uh, with our naked eyes, that is, is we can we can see some city smog. Uh, sometimes when you have a big high-pressure area over an area, you wind up seeing a lot of haze, and uh, it kind of looks like smoke, smog. But uh, the only other things we can really see from space uh, with your naked eyes, we can see some rivers and streams that flow into the ocean, which... Uh, it's not really pollution, but it's the sediments and things that are caused by rain and different uh, uh, erosions. Uh, we can see those things, uh, and uh, if you have a uh, volcano that erupts, you can see all the plume and uh, those kind of smoke and debris and uh, things like that in the atmosphere. What effect do you hope your mission, uh, the Mars Pathfinder, the increased interest among Americans in space is going to have on the future of the space program? Well, I think it's going to have a, a great effect. The, uh, the space program, we've been doing things that are fantastic for many years, and unfortunately not everyone around the world hears about what we do. So uh, with the, uh, the MIR program going on, the space station, our international space station, which is coming here in a year or so, and the, uh, the Mars Pathfinder, all those things are very, very things that we're kind of doing uh, all the time with NASA, and it's nice now that the general public can see what we're doing. So we're very, very proud of all those things, and we're going to continue to do those kind of things in the future. You mentioned the International Space Station, the future International Space Station. I understand you're going to be testing this Japanese-made robotic arm for possible use on this space station later on. What will this arm do? Well, actually, as you know, we have a... Uh, a Canadian arm on board. It's a it's a relatively long arm. It's about the length of our payload bay, about about 60 feet, and it's used primarily for deploying payloads and uh, and grabbing payloads. The small fine arm that we're testing on this flight, and we call it MFD because Manipulator Flight Demonstration. Uh, that small fine arm will be at the end of a, a long arm similar to the big one we have, and it will be able to uh, say replace things on orbit without going outside. You just do it by the robotic arm. It can open doors, undo bolts, and we can replace things called R ORUs, orbital replacement units, or maybe change out payloads that are sitting out on the kind of the back porch of the space station out where um, we can't reach them without going EVA or extravehicular activity. And uh, we can use the robot arm just to reach out and grab them and put them maybe inside an airlock and, uh, and that way we can bring them back home. Tell us a little bit more about the status of this mission. Uh, in general, your primary mission is to check out the ozone level. What kind of shape is Earth's ozone level in? Well, Miriam, uh, you know, that's kind of hard for me to say. I'm not a, a scientist for the atmosphere, but uh, back in 94, uh, I flew an STS-66, and we had a similar satellite. It was Christus Bos number one, and uh, we deployed it, and it gathered a lot of data on the upper atmosphere on the ozone and all the chemicals in the upper atmosphere. And this is a second flight of the Christmas Spas, and they're lo looking for even more data to cover more of the polar regions of the world, which uh, STS-66 could not cover. So yesterday was a very busy day for us. We deployed Christmas Spas, and uh, it's well on its way now collecting data of the Earth.
and then you'll just bring it back. And this is a very crowded flight, 24 payloads, uh, a lot of scientific experiments to conduct in all. And in general, is that where you see the future of the shuttle program moving toward, just as a platform for scientific experiments? Well, Miriam, the shuttle is a, a very versatile uh, machine. It, it's amazing what we can do. Uh, obviously, we can take things up and deploy things and bring them back, which we're going to do on this flight. But also, as you mentioned, we have many, many different payloads and activities. We range from deploying the CRISPR satellite to study the Earth's atmosphere. We have many uh, experiments that are designed to test equipment and design equipment for the future space station, uh, how it's going to be developed, deployed, and operated. We also have astronomy on board. We're going to be looking at the Hellbop Comet, and also we have a, a bridge structure in the payload bay called IEH, Extreme uh, UV Hitchhiker, and it's going to be gathering data on some of the uh, items that are out in the, uh, in the space and deep space. So we have quite a variety for uh, this mission, and that doesn't really count all the little things in the mid-deck uh, and uh, other things that are in the payload bay that, that aren't, aren't prime. Perfectly safe out there. I think uh, a little garble there. Do we feel safe up here? I think the answer there is definitely yes. Uh, we have a great team of folks on the ground supporting us. Uh, they're watching over us, whatever we're doing. They have a lot more data than we do, so they have a better insight of the health of the vehicle. But uh, we go through a lot of training on the ground to uh, prepare us for uh, almost any malfunction that could happen in the orbiter. and. Uh, and that's one of the good things about flying is you don't have to go back to the simulator and do more training. You're up in orbit doing the real thing.